Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Oh, my goodness. I have a new computer that's not working half the time, but I think we're okay now. So I think we can start our show. <laughs> Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. My lighting saga continues. Next show will be better. <laughs> Getting better all the time. Good morning, everyone. I'm Ann Mosley. I'm here with the well-lit Kyle Harvey. And we are bringing you Monday Morning Coffee with Kyle and Ann. We bring you this every week. It is our pleasure to do so because we sell real estate in downtown Chicago in Baird Warner's Gold Coast office, and we sell all over the city. And today we're going to talk about Uptown. We're going Uptown. Uptown. Yes. Um, you know, I used to go through Uptown all the time on my way um, north. I had a place that I would go to up um, in Edgewater, and I would take the 151. So this is like a trip through the past. This is go, like go, coming home for you. So going Uptown's been you. very hot lately, and that's why we decided to talk Uptown. Yeah. Everybody's going to Uptown. So I'm going to share my screen, and we're going to first talk about stats, and then we'll talk about other stuff about Uptown. All right. If you didn't know, this is where Uptown is located in the city of Chicago along the north side on the lakefront. And, oh, We'll throw this in before we get to stats, I guess. Um, it has an A in diversity, Fifty, almost 58,000 people live there. And the median income is just below the national average at 68,114. All right. So let's talk statistics. Um, <clears throat> single family homes. Who's our name at the top? Just so we can see the top of the slide. You've done such a beautiful job. Of I know. I forget this every week and I apologize to you. There we go. Okay. And now I lost. Here we go. All right. Single family home prices. This looks like monthly. It is actually a rolling 12 month on that red line, but because there are so few homes that single family homes that sell in uptown, it's more of a jagged line. And you'll see that in a moment, but the median, sales price for a single family home in Uptown is a million one five oh. Here is the range of home prices. I thought this would be interesting to look at. Most all of the homes are between a million and two million. Eleven homes closed last month. And you can see the very most is like just over 20 on any given month up there. Despite the fact that there are so many people in so many households, most of it is condominiums. Um, no homes closed last month. The average price per square foot for a single family home is $305. Now, condos, median sales price is $298.6. I don't show it versus the lakefront neighborhoods, but that's down. Um, I, it's over $300. That's, that's pretty high, consider it. Yeah, yeah. And here's here's how they range. I mean, yeah. they're more in the hundred to five hundred price point for a condo. And here are the number of condos for sale: seventy four closed last month, which was down forty two percent, and that's just based on inventory. Uh, wait a minute. Apologies. Seventy four for sale is down. Way down. Oh, right. Yeah. So we don't have inventory, and that's why the number of closed are down because we don't have inventory. Only 25 closed last month. And the average price per square foot for a condo is 238. Yeah. Yeah. And just to go back, I, when I was doing my research for today's show, I saw that there were two homes under a million dollars for sale, two single family homes, one for 500,000, but it looked like if you open the door, the whole thing would fall. Wow. But it's, you know. Well, we've got my Castlewood up there. Yeah. yeah I think your Castlewood was the other one. Castlewood's up there. There were, two, there were two on Castlewood. Wasn't there another one on Castlewood that's just under a million? Or maybe uh, not. There, there's one for two million and one for three million that yeah. 
on Castlewood for sale right now. All right, you want to tell us some history? Well, so the history of, um, I'm going to show you a picture because um, to give you a sense of what the neighborhood looked like before we all, any of us were born. Okay, Middle Earth, Benjamin Springs, Delaware, people. Is that? It's Monday morning, everybody. <laughs> Kyle was out partying last night. I was sort of rooting. For, I got to tell you, it, first of all, we had no dog in the in the Super Bowl hunt. But I was sort of rooting for the. Um, I'm happy. I'm happy with any outcome. It was it was lovely. So as you can see, this is sort of the center of up of uptown. Isn't this the up that bank building that was designed by what's his name? Um, Burnham, not Burnham. Excuse me. Um, Frenchman Marshall. Bridgeview Bank is not where that is, and the Goldblatt's building, and yeah, all this stuff is gorgeous. So anyway, this is oopsie. Uh, I'm jumping ahead of myself. So people, this was this. I'm going to summarize. This neighborhood started as um, sort of an. I'm going to go back. Hold on. Um, it started as a uh, sort of a summertime place where people in the city would go north to get away from all the you know, pollution of the south of the of the city center. Uh, Uptown was considered sort of a resort. This is all before 1900. And in 1900, in the 1900s, after the World's Columbian Exposition, um, there was a big construction boom in Chicago and in Uptown. And they started to build more and more houses. And they, those are houses that were influenced by the very neoclassical stuff that was being done at the um, Columbian Exposition. Um, after it, it, Uptown had been booming, and then the you know, depression came along and the boom slowed for everyone and everywhere. The, um, the, the uh, war started, to, the war came on in the late 30s, early 40s. Um, and there was again a need for uh, manufacturing jobs and, and people to work in those jobs. Um, and so, uh, and at the same time, which I thought was very interesting, uh, there was a very anti-immigrant feeling, and the U.S. closed its borders to a lot of immigrants. And so there was a real need for um, internal immigrants, in, you know, U.S. citizens, but Americans, to move up north and take on these manufacturing jobs. And um, uh, Southerners, both blacks and whites, believe it or not, the Great Migration um, that we've talked about with um, the black population moving up from the south to the north, there was an even larger white migration up to north, particularly from the mountain south. So Appalachia, I'm pronouncing it incorrectly. Yeah, just say Appalachian Mountains. <laughs> Appalachia. Appalachia, that's better. Um, but the mountain south, Kentucky, uh, in large measure, they moved up north. And a lot of those people settled in Uptown. And Uptown in the 50s and 60s became known as Hillbilly Heaven. Um, and, and that was my experience. You know, I never knew it was called Hillbilly Heaven. And I, I was going through Uptown and seeing it really on a weekly basis. It's like, I think these people are hillbillies. <laughs> um, because you started to understand who these people were. So, um, but one of the things that was very interesting the uh, the hill the the southerners who moved up here were um, workers. Um, they had not a huge experience with um, education or wealth building, and so they tended to be day laborers who would at the end of the um, at the end of the week spend all their money on entertainment. Um, and it was sort of a rock and raucous neighborhood, um, and one that was looked down upon by the rest of the city. Um, and uh, there was crime, there was uh, noise, it was a, the Uptown had become a real entertainment district with, um, with these palaces like the Aragon Ballroom. Name some others. You lived up there. Um, Uptown Theater. Um, there were the movie studios you were telling us about. Oh, the SNA studios, right. That was before. That was more like in uh, 
the early 1900s when Charlie Chaplin, Gloria Swanson lived in Edgewater, was from there and was in the SNA studios. Um, well, the neighborhood became an entertainment district because yeah. of all of that activity from the earlier time. So, um, so in the in the sixties, um, the city, the business community decided they wanted to do something about Uptown, and so a plan was hatched to um, to take over about I think it was one hundred and fifty acres in Uptown to build um, a community college. And the Uptown residents were not consulted, especially the Southerners. And some Southerners rose up to try and create and, and work together to plan and bring consensus together to build something else there, something called Hank Williams Village, which was going to be a sort of a planned community and all. And of course that did not come through. And instead they I built a very yeah. college. Wow. So just a quick couple pictures, just so you can see. These are, uh, let's see, pictures from those days of hillbilly heaven, um, what the streets looked like. I mean, it was a it was a hopping neighborhood um, with a lot going on. So that's all I got for you guys. Wow. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All righty. Now let's go. All right. All right. So. I'm going to talk a little bit about the various areas within Uptown. There are different historic districts or neighborhoods within this area. Oh, Aragon Ballroom right there. Okay. And here's the red line going right through it. That's the main transportation route, unless you take one of the buses along Lakeshore Drive. Um, <coughs> Boyna Park. Let me go back here. Here's Boyna Park. And Hutchinson Street is within Boyna Park. And these are some of the beautiful homes that Kyle was just talking about. Interestingly enough, I sold this property. This was originally the day school. And you know what? This school was started to take care of some of these crazy boys who were running around. So, um, then it kind of it was used as a day school which was a school for cps kids for a while and then it was sold now it's Haymarket publishing i never um, knew that that's cool yeah this yeah it was a it was a neat neat building um now we're on hutchinson street and just to give you a sense this is the highest price home to sell on hutchinson three million two ninety nine here's 839 some really cool and i had to show you the inside because just how cool is that all right. Then the other Sheridan Park is another neighborhood that's more like Dover and Beacon Street. And this is the highest price property to sell there. 50 by 196 lot for a million three. Look at how big that is. Wow. OK, now East Ravenswood Historic District incorporates Graceland West as well as East Ravenswood. And that think of Ashland to the tracks, you know, the um, Metro line. So 1600 to 1800 West between Irving Park and Lawrence. So this is the house I lived in for all of three years that I sold last year. Um, this is, you can't really see it, Rahm Emanuel's house. He has a home in East Ravenswood on Hermitage. Did they keep this, that? Pardon? Have they kept that? They had it for, I think he may still own it. This is where Abbott Labs started. Mr. Abbott lived here. This is at the corner of Wilson and Hermitage. I just say it's Wilson. It's got to be, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this is an example of some of the newer. There have been a lot of homes that have come in, and because the lots are so big, this is $3 million five, the highest priced sale in East Ravenswood. Okay, then Castlewood is one street, and there are two on the market right now of interest, 905 here for 2999 and 819 And the listing agent on this one is trying to make us think that Gloria Swanson lived here, but I don't know if she did. And then there's Margate Terrace, which is the area between Clarendon and Marine Drive, between Montrose and Lawrence. 
and there are a bunch of cul-de-sac roads there and that they might have made those cul-de-sacs to try to keep them separate and quiet from the rest of the Falderal going in the you know it was it was to make it it's to keep it away from Sheridan and to make it and I think they put a school right around there to, and it was yeah protect these properties so now you've got you've got some stuff to share with us too about properties right I do. I have, a, I have a few properties that I thought were pretty good. These are all new to the market, and they are all really new to the market. And um, I'm going to have to. Hmm. I thought these were sort of good. Are, we, uh, yep. are you ready to share? Oh, sorry. I was taking my name off the screen. No, okay, there we go. So this is, um, and I'm going to have to, uh, 4063 North Sheridan Road, Unit 3. It is a two bedroom, two bath, 1,700 square feet on the market um, for five days at $489,000. $489, so it's a pretty brick building on Sheridan. This is um, Sheridan uh, is sometimes residential, sometimes commercial. Um, this is a little bit more of a residential section of it. Just um, is it is that is 40 um, Irving Park or just yeah. Yeah, there we go. 4,000 so, serving. Right. But look at how pretty this. Um, that is big. Look how well that lives. And Very so nice. one of the things that I thought was interesting is the kitchen is often how they organize these apartments is the living space was in the front. The kitchen was in the back. Right, right. The kitchen in the middle, which I think um, is how people live now. This is the back bedroom. And it just gives you an example. I think this is going to go really fast. It's got one outdoor parking. All of these, I think, are going to have parking. Um, the next one is 646 West Bittersweet. Bittersweet is one block north of um, Irving Park on uh, between Marine and Clarendon. So this right. is a cute little um, Look at the tile roof. I love that. This building was, they don't, um, they don't know the year, but this is probably from the early two, uh, 1900s. Yeah. So this is a uh, three bedroom, two bath on the market for 575 with um, one outdoor spot. But look at all this sunshine flowing yeah. in. To, and it's got sunrooms and bright, um, a nice <coughs> office space. So that I thought that was really darling. That's fun, yeah. And uh, and as I said, three bedrooms. And then the um, third is forty six twenty two North Magnolia. So in that uh, area that um, could be the Sheridan Park area, yeah. And um, just really right. awesome building. This is Unit Two North, and it is two bedrooms, two bath on the market for three hundred ninety five thousand dollars with one. Ex your spot. Oh, no one's going to have a garage in this neighborhood, people. Let's just be honest about the whole thing. <laughs> um, but again, look how cute. Um, yeah. Bright, big. This one is um, third, well, not terribly big, 1,352 square feet. But well, that's bigger than your traditional 1,200 square foot downtown condo. And, better. and it's got this cute little outdoor back porch. And then here's quickly the floor plan. This is the only one that had a floor plan, or people I would have given you more. Oh, so the kitchen's toward the front in this one, too. I love the bay window. Really it's, cute. It's solving the problem that a lot of people feel. They don't want the kitchens in the back. So there you right. go. I'm stopping sharing screen. That's a nice unit. How much is that one again? Three ninety five. dollars Very That's nice. Asking prices, people. But they're going to yeah. go. All Very right. Very nice. Okay, so now I'm going to come back, and let's talk a little bit skip that. Okay. So one other area in Uptown that we all know and love is Little Vietnam or Asia and Argyle. Argyle Street runs through. This is actually another historic district. They have recently paved Argyle to make it very pedestrian friendly. But um, some of our favorite restaurants are up here. Um, this is the corner of Broadway and Argyle right here. Tank Noodle is here. Um, a lot of people love and go to the Tank Noodle. Um, I'll, I might as well talk about my favorites. Thai Pastry 
is just a little bit south of here. It is our go-to for Thai food. Love, love, love. And uh, Sunwa, a lot of people know, that's where you get the Peking duck carved at your table. And uh, people come from all over to go see that. So, oh, here they are right here. Sunwa Thai pastry. Demera is Ethiopian. Spaca Napoli is uh, Italian, obviously, just on the edge. Um, hop leaf is in the neighborhood. Hop leaf is Belgian. They have all kinds of wonderful beers. Great, great food. Um, why did I do that? That's uh, not one. Anyway, so those are my favorite restaurants in the neighborhood. Now, amenities. Um, Margate Park. We talked about the neighborhood and the residential area, but there is a Margate Park field house in the park. And for anybody who's raised kids in the city, you're probably familiar with the AYSO soccer field. So kids from all over the city play soccer in these fields up and down the park here. So every Saturday morning, you'll see them there. I love um, the field house has exercise equipment. I mean, yeah. it's a real community um, benefit. It's, it's really kind Absolutely. of great. Absolutely. And then of course, see there, there are the soccer fields there, but we've got Montrose Beach and Montrose Harbor and the bird sanctuary. Over 300 species of birds have been recorded here and Montrose Harbor, Beautiful. which is a gorgeous harbor. And there, I love this shot because you can see where it is in location in regards to the city. There's the um, Maravitz golf course there. And then my friend and hairdresser, Laura Coleman, whose husband is a musician, told me about this. And I haven't been here, but I hear it's awesome. The dock at Montrose Beach, and they've got musicians, and it's outside restaurant, and it, it, it evidently rocks. And then, of course, there's the dog beach. Um, and I just have to, for fun, stop sharing. Hold on. Stop share. And I'm going to just show you. This is how I spent my birthday last year. Can you... At the dog beach. Oh, hi, oh. Baxter. Happy as clams. But um to wash them off. How do you want me to take to get all the sand out? Oh, they have a thing there where you can wash your dog. It is the coolest thing. It's called I forget, Jackson, Mutt Jackson. Anyway, you put your dog in. It's like a car wash. You put your like credit <laughs> card in and it you get the soap, you get the water, and then it even dries them. I kid you not, it's fantastic. So you can do all that before you put the dog back in the car. I was going to say, otherwise, that car. Oh, my God. And you may also ask, why did I remember that it was on my birthday? Besides the fact that it said the date on the video. But um, I love to go there on Friday before the air show because you're at the beach and there are all the dogs and it's this beautiful summer day. And then the jets fly overhead because they're practicing for the next day's air show and, and they fly right over Montrose Beach. So it's very fun. So anyway. How did the dogs handle that? They didn't even like uh, notice it. It was weird. So. Dog. I, I didn't notice really any of the dogs on the beach getting too undone by the jets flying overhead. Well, because they have the water. At yeah, home, their minds, but but uh, at the beach, I'm like, Ooh. yeah. So anyway, that's that. Anything else you wanted to share about uptown? Nothing I want to share about uptown. One of the things I wanted to talk about, I tried to find and couldn't find. So let's talk about this. We, we yeah. talked when you were going through the staff. We talked about how how little inventory there. And I saw, it was it in the New York Times? I think it was in the New York Times. There was an article about it's this this inventory problem is around the country because one, they're not building, and two, people aren't selling. So it was an article, um, and the opening bit of the article describes a woman in Los Angeles who's been looking and looking and looking for property. Um, and her current home, she rents out. I mean, her she owns a piece of property she's currently renting, but she rents out her she has a condo and she rents it out rather than selling it. And the, and the um, journalist asks, well, why don't you sell your place? And then you'll have more money in which to buy the next thing. She's like, why would I do that? Um, so 
part of the, and she recognizes that she's part of the problem. Part of the problem, yeah. people won't let go of their stuff. People well, don't you think, I mean, it's kind of funny. People are like, I've got a three and a half percent interest rate. Why would I sell? But it's kind of like, if it's not your dream home, if it's not where you want to be, what's the point of hanging on to it, right? Everyone wants somebody else to sell. Right. Not them. <laughs> I want you to do something that benefits me, but I'm not going to do something that benefits somebody else. That's right. But um, yes, certainly in Chicago, we're seeing this where we just don't have enough properties on the market. And, um, but it's a good time. I don't know about you, but I'm, you know, lots of activity on my listings, lots of activity. People I, are out there. I'm a, so I was talking with some clients. I've got a little townhouse in Old Town about to come on the market. And um, a neighbor from upstairs. So there, it's a, it's, it's um, what's it called on the park? Uh, Terra, Eugenie Terrace. Mm -hmm. and neighbors in a larger townhouse have come down. Right. They want to buy it, and or they they're interested in buying one of the smaller townhouses. And they said to me, "Should I just sell it to that? To sell it to this person?" I said, "No." And here's why: say so you certainly can sell it to them, right. but go on the market because. I've been talking about it to brokers and through um, Top Agent Network, and there are tons of people interested. I said, let's right. test it on the market. And they're right. like, oh, wow. So people, there are, I mean, there are people out there. It doesn't mean you can be crazy with pricing. You still have to price it appropriately. But if you do, you're going to have a ton of interest, and you might sell it for a little bit more. Okay. Exactly right. So we just had the Super Bowl supposedly this is the kickoff to our spring market. So it may get even more busy. Yeah, I've got a couple of things about to come on. I'm excited. It's going to be I an interesting year. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks. This has been fun. Viva Uptown. Viva. And um, everybody, if you'd like to see more properties in Uptown, give us a ring. We can take you and show you some. There's some great ones. Tell you I some. All right. Bye-bye.